What is going on, everybody? Just got back in from the JJ All-Star Show in Louisville, Kentucky. Didn't really spend a whole lot of money. Um, I think I was at 250 when I looked at what I had left in my wallet for all this. And that, that includes like a probably like a ten dollar meal at Chick fil A too. So probably about two forty, I, I think, and all that. Okay, for the show itself, it was this is no fault of the promoter. All he could do is get dealers in there. He can't choose what the dealers bring and stuff like that, as I always say. It it was kind of dry for me, really. Um, I walked in hoping that some of the guys with the value boxes that were there last show would be back. None of them uh, really showed up back at that show. I do know there was some bad weather north of the show, just across the river. And I know it's it kind of screwed up a couple people getting there late, I was told, because of where they came from up towards, like, between Louisville and uh, Indianapolis. So that could be part of the reason offhand. There were a lot of people walking around. I talked to a few other people. Um, like 502 Frank walk around. I think some of you guys might know him from his YouTube channel. It, it was just like one of those things where there was nothing. It was like, ooh, I got to have it. At the very end, any card breaks did show up. Um, and I mean, he had some big, nice cards there. And I think it'd been kind of hard to move a lot of them. There were some really nice Jackie Robinson and stuff. And I meant to get a video of it, but I was hurrying up to trying to get my way out to get somebody their PSA order dropped off at their work. But overall experience there, um, wow. Uh, a couple guys I talked to, there was one gentleman that was set up with like, I don't know what it was, five, six tables, maybe four. And the value stuff was, eh. If you wanted to buy a bunch of PSA 8 Jordans low end, they were then there, some nines. Oh, let me think here. I looked in his case. There was upper deck Joe Namath, John Elway, Dual Auto. I thought it was really cool. He had it marked at three and a quarter. I figured it might have been a little bit high. It was really high. Especially when a BGS 9.5 during like the hype phase started in tw late 2020 sold for 265 And after talking to two other people, they're like, hey, I comped some other stuff. I should use the word comp, but they looked up some other values and stuff in there. And they're like way over and don't even bother asking if they'll come down to it. And I said, well, this wipes out this whole section of table, you know. So I don't know really what was all left in his showcases. Uh, I was glad when I did first walk in, I got to go through some hockey stuff, which you guys will see. Oh, Wildcat, fair warning, there is no football in this. I am very sorry, but there was just nothing there that was price reasonable or I, they didn't have it uh, like every table or every other table had the same cards type deal. So I want to put that out because I know it might be a little bit longer with me talking in this video. So I do apologize. I should have started off with that because I know um, a lot of times you don't have a lot of time to watch the videos and you're waiting to see some cool football cards. There are none. So I do apologize. So I uh, walked around, had some really interesting conversations and we're going to talk a little bit about those. And then I'll go in and show you guys what I picked up today. Some of this does Comp C, some goes in the box for some vintage grading, and the rest is all hockey. Uh, there was a lot of talk. I was talking about, you know, shows in particular, and a couple people actually watched the videos that uh, I talked to, and, you know, it was all in agreement that, you know, they do set up. And I will say this, I've seen more dealers there as buyers today than being set up. So I would say at least seven to eight that i talked to that i know normally have tables at shows just weren't setting up and i asked the same question i said oh you're not setting up today they're like nah you know i'm gonna probably you know start setting up a lot less you know it's hard to change out stuff and i'm just i could sell it for a better price and better profit margins online than coming in here and losing 80 you know losing 20 percent, sometimes 25 to somebody and these guys all have you know, their sales tax licensing, their EINs and everything. So they also have to pay taxes on all that stuff. And it just makes more sense to sell it online. I understood that part. And it kind of goes with the other two videos I did. And I was just trying to see, maybe I'm just being far-fetched the way I'm thinking. Maybe I'm just, you know, looking to maximize profits and gains, which everybody should. Don't get me wrong. But... It's just one of those things to where, you know, these guys usually have cards I like to look at and buy, and they just weren't set up. They were there as just buyers themselves. And, you know, I can understand 
I was talking with one gentleman, and I used to set up by him a lot. And I used to help price his wax boxes. Uh, this was during, like, probably, like, maybe 10, 11 months after COVID uh, kind of timbered down. They were allowed to start doing shows again. He just said, you know, it's really painful sitting there and having a price, you know, eight display cases of cards if I start setting up every week, every bi week, and then what cards do I set out? He goes, it, 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 that's one of the reasons why I don't set up a lot anymore. It's just a lot of work doing it where I could just take the cards and put them online and they could sit there and, you know, somebody makes offers. I start seeing the same offers coming in around that price range. I relook at the card. It kind of made a lot of sense with that at, offhand. So a lot of good conversations. I would never record any of them. Um, I kind of still feel like the older person who doesn't want to record people's conversations at shows and stuff like that that I have. Um, I don't know. It just kind of feels like I'm going into their privacy with it and stuff like that. And I'd rather just have the good conversation than trying to put them on the spot type deal, asking questions and stuff just to talk about in videos later on. But, like I said, a lot of this stuff there are very, very overpriced. Um, it's New Year. I, I thought there would be a lot more people there. Uh, same thing with, like, there's plenty of people been sending messages asking me if I'm going to one or two shows next weekend. No, I'm setting up a different show with somebody um, for a different area. It's the first time in a show. I figured I'd go up there and see what could happen out there. Plus, might get some other different... Uh, dealers sellers out there that i normally don't see maybe find something really cool for myself but like i said i was really really shocked that i didn't spend a whole lot of money today it's probably the first time and i'm gonna say pre-covid that i didn't spend at least like around 500 dollars at a show kind of crazy i know but when I'm being very particular in what I want to buy and stuff now to where I can have a little more fun with it, maybe have some stuff for grading, I think that might be one of the bigger trends unless I'm picking up collections and stuff out there to where there's some really, really cool stuff into it. Let's see here. I mean, I can sit there and tell you guys about some of the really interesting conversation I had. It was about, you know, when you go to KFC and, you know, they give you the little packet of, uh, like, for your fork in there and napkin. Why is there a salt packet in there? Who puts salt on KFC food? I mean, it's already salty enough as to begin with. I mean, there was just stuff, crazy stuff like that that we always talk about. It shows just uh, some of the weird things, I guess you can say. Um, Let me think here. I don't see a whole lot of vintage other than the guy who basically runs the show, brings his own stuff there. He usually has vintage uh, sports cards, whether it's baseball, um, football. But it's just one of those things that's really a dying breed. And when you do see them, they're like, oh, $10 a common player, or $5 a common player. Like, whoa, they ain't COVID prices here. But I think that's where a lot of people aren't looking, or they're just like, you know, they're stuck on these prices saying we'll find another one like this. And the bad part is a lot of the cars where people think that you can find them at other avenues, whether it's on eBay or Com C, and you could get it at a fair price instead of overpaying for the show. Granted, the one thing you can't see if it's a raw card, you get to see the condition upright versus buying it off of eBay. But if it's a graded card, I mean, graded, it's graded to me. But overall, you know, it wasn't a great show for me. I did get to link up with a lot of people, get to, you know, talk and stuff like that there. Um, let's go to what I picked up. It was only from two dealers. So starting off, there was another gentleman. I haven't seen him at one of these shows. He might be fairly new. I picked all this up, I think, for 20 bucks. Um, Omar Vizquel, older relic. He had a Johnny Unitas. If you guys remember the Letterman... Um, that predicted it was like numbered out like 126 I remember and he wanted like $42 for it I'm like wow these still go that high and I was just kind of shocked you know it was something interesting I looked and they were all selling for like seven to ten dollars he's like no I can't do that at that time frame I put back a big stack of stuff because 
I didn't want to sit there and just be like, hey, your prices are just not there at the values. But I found this stuff here, and I figured I'd take a stab at it. Um, anything NT, the base cards out of 99, always get you know, a couple dollars. So those two there are Com Cs. And then I always try to pick up some vintage. It looks in rough, not rough shape, in good shape that's not really beat up. You, granted, these are like $5 cards, but if you could pick them up, you know, for 2 bucks a piece or something like that, or three bucks a piece. I'll take a stab at for whenever PSA runs their grading specials because, you know, you get a five or six onto it, and now it might be a forty dollar card, fifty dollar card, whatever it may be onto it. But uh, I just lost a fifty seven tops, I believe, without looking at the back. Uh, Bob Bowman, and then a Blaylock. Pretty good. I mean, other than this corner down here, they look really nice with the um, coloring and everything onto it. Then 251 Bowman's, Meyer, and Richmond. I always have guys that are looking to build sets PSA onto these, so I figured this would be something I could use, grade, throw in the box behind me, and maybe use it for some trade bait. But yeah, I think it, this was all... Oh, is there another card? I thought there was another card I had onto it. But yeah, I, I think I paid 20 bucks for all this stuff. Four, 16... No, I lied. Um, I paid 18 18 for it all. So, I had to add that up in my head. So I figured I'd, I'd get a couple things off them, especially if whenever you could find good vintage, or I should say vintage in really good shape that's not, like, beat the crap out of. And the last step was a guy, he bought a hockey collection. I'm guessing it has to be close to a year and a half ago. And I was going through his what I could call the value boxes, and he had some cool stuff into it. He's like, hey, if you want anything out of there, I'll cut you a heck of a deal off it. And he goes, we can look it up if the sticker's off on stuff. And I think he gave these all to me between 70 to 75%. So it was really nice because I'm going to look at this stuff to grade. If it's not going to grade to make sense onto it, then it'll go to Com C. And I might make, you know, a dollar a card or something on it. It's nothing really huge, but some really cool hockey stuff. So starting off, we got Connor McDavid, Goalie Nightmares. This was out of 16, Upper Deck Hockey. And I should say, somewhere in my title, I think in this video, I'm going to put it's uh, Hockey Heavy. And that's kind of like my reminder when I'm rewatching it to do that. <laughs> Upper Deck Portraits, it's the second year, Connor McDavid. A base SP Authentic Sidney Crosby. Um, he had $2 on to it, and I was like, $2 for a base Crosby. Then, you know, basically I'm in it now for like $1.50. I'll take it. I think these are the same. Yep. Two, um, be a player's Chris Drury autos for the Rangers. And unless you're really into hockey, some of these names you're going to be like, who? But Chris Drury, he had to sell for a whole lot, but it was pretty cool pieces. Same with Paul Stastny. I know he's not in Colorado anymore. I want to say for some reason he went down to Tampa. I could be wrong on this. But his stuff used to sell really, really good. Ovechkin and I guess Zykov. Never heard of uh, Zykov, to be honest. But dual patch from in the game. Ovechkin, he's going to be breaking... Uh, Gretzky's record probably next year. So I've been slowly picking that stuff up. Uh, really hard to find autographs of him that are in really good condition that you can grade or rookie cards. Up next, Ovechkin and Ilya Kovalchuk. A lot of you guys might remember Kovalchuk. He went to the Pittsburgh Penguins uh, in a mid-season trade deadline type situation. They lost in the Stanley Cup Finals in seven is it seven games, I believe? Or no, six games, something like that, to the uh, Red Wings. He went over to them. Pittsburgh came back next year, beat him in seven games. So, kind of cool piece right there. I think this was Artifacts. No, SP, SPX, my bad, SPX. Another Stamp Coast piece out of 75. This is from Opeachy Premier. This is not, like, player-worn, I should say. Manufacturer NHL patch. Thought it was a pretty cool piece. When I started looking them up, I'm like, huh. Surprisingly, you know, he wasn't much off from the sticker prices on to it. Up next, uh, this is Ultimate. No, I think this is Premier. No, that's right. Ultimate Collection, Kovalchuk and Malkin, Dual Relics. 
or you can call it a quad relic, two player dual relics out of 50. Pretty cool piece. Old school Pittsburgh Penguin, Larry Murphy, upper deck game jersey. This would have been from 2009, upper deck. Oops, I know I just lost focus. Hold on. There we go. Nicholas Lindstrom, another relic piece, game jersey. Hey, what I like about this stuff, it's all, a lot of this stuff is going to say game used from upper deck. Again, one of the reasons why I like, I'm sticking with hockey, this stuff's all game used. At the very least, you might have player worn. It will have some manufactured patches on this stuff, as you've seen. But at least it doesn't say not from any specific player event or game or whatever else onto it. Another Lindstrom dual um, jersey piece onto this here from SP Game Use. Marion Gabrick. Traded to the Rangers. They still got him in wild uniform. Some people would have called this an error back in the day. Might still call it today, but it's really not. Eric Carlson rookie materials. Most people won't remember he played for Ottawa, then went to San Jose. Now he's a Pittsburgh Penguin. Pretty cool to find one of his rookie materials out there. Three young guns. These don't sell for much. I think they're like seven, eight bucks. James Van Reemsdyke. Pretty good hockey player. Uh, I'm going to look and see if any of these are gradable. If not, it'll just be Com C stuff that I put out there that I can use to sell and then take whatever I make off it to use you guys seen and buy some bigger cards. Same thing. Ooh, no, I got four of them. Matt Duchesne, Young Guns, picked up four of those were in his box. Again, nothing like, none of these Young Guns I think were over $20. Well, it might be coming up. But um, another player... He was popular for a while, then kind of died off with age and everything like that. So, figured what the heck on to it. Steven Stamkos, name you don't hear a whole lot of. And this is actually on the case right there, in case anybody's looking at it. Um, this is his Black Diamond Rookie Gems. These only do like, I think it was $25 roughly on to them. So, pretty cool piece right there. Hopefully, it's one of the ones that will be able to be graded. I mean, grading them, I think the 10s were 100 to 125 dollars. So at 19 dollars a card, plus say I have 20 dollars into the card, you know, you kind of double your money on to it after fees. Claude Giroux was the only thing I picked up out of his case. Uh, this dude just used to beat up Pittsburgh. <laughs> One of the reasons I picked it up, I think it's like a 50 dollar card or so. So numbered out 3.99. His upper deck young gun as well, too. Another one that's not very, very expensive. Now, I will say, I think I got a picture in the camera. Um, if you go back to the beginning of the video and there's some hockey showing, there's a Zetterberg and Ryan Getzliff dual stick auto from Black Diamond 101. I've been looking at that card for over a year. One day I might pull the trigger if we can come to a uh, price range on it. But uh, Brand Dubinsky, Rangers Future Watch card. Again, nothing that sells for anything crazy, stupid, and money. And then Steven Stamkos, rookie again. This is out of Artifacts. I think that's $9.99. Yep, $9.99. And really weird, there's not a lot of these graded. <laughs> they must have been through Beckett back then. A lot of people grading their stuff. I did see, I think one PSA 10 did something... I can't remember if it was this card or another card I looked up, and it was like really low to where the base was selling for like $30, and the PSA 10 did like $60. It might have been that card right there. It's kind of a little foggy and hazy there for me. So like I said, it was nothing real crazy in pickups. Uh, my intention was to go to go in through dollar boxes, find stuff that I could sell on Com C for, you know, 3 to $5, Make the profit off the stuff over time this year, picking some, you know, cooler pieces that I could use for my display or my personal collection. And, you know, it's just one of those things. You have a goal <laughs> to go somewhere and look for stuff at the show, and it's just not there. Um, there's times I don't go to shows, or I do go to shows with very little money, and I find stuff that I want all across the board going, crap, now I got to go hit a bank up real quick.
you know, or ask them when they take Venmo, PayPal, etc. <laughs> but I mean, for me, I, I still call it a successful show, even though it's not a whole lot here. I did get a nice stack of hockey stuff to look and review. Uh, see what I can get out graded. Uh, PSA just rolled out a little special onto it. So if I can get some tens onto this stuff and they're selling at $100, $125 a pop, I think overall, you know, success for today. The older, uh, older 51 Bowman's, I think it was 57 Topses. Like I said, I've been just grabbing stuff like that shows. So I don't really show it that much, which I need to start showing. And I just put them into a stack for whenever PSA does a special from like the 50s only, 60s only. You know, it might be like $11.99 a card. And I send them in then. Uh, probably be the cheapest I can get something graded at, you know. But overall, like I said, a little mixed emotions on to it. Uh, no fault again to the person that runs the show. You know, he put dealers in there you can't control what comes in you also can't control the crowd that comes in as well too i don't know i, I realized that there was some playoff football which is actually i've been on for 18 minutes let's see if the steelers are up when i get off of here but uh i figured maybe that was something with it maybe there were bowl games on i just i don't know what was really going on so first card show of the year yeah a little rough for me, a little rough, that's all I can say. There was some nice stuff that I just wasn't in the same where I seen their value of the card, what I thought it was worth versus what somebody else thought it was worth. So nothing crazy today for pickups, everybody. Uh, if you guys watched the previous video, there were some nice cards on there I got in the mail. But other than that, that is it. I know I've been blabbing for over 20 minutes here. But wanted to go through with just some of the stuff that I talked with some of the uh, dealers that weren't set up there. And then some of the dealers that I did know that were set up there. Uh, some of them just having some rough times really selling at card shows. They are doing a lot better online at card shows. Does it mean we're going to be starting to look at the death of the card shows? You know, will they start disappearing more and more throughout the year to where... Maybe a state doesn't have one to two to three, you know, well, actually, let me say it has multiple shows a weekend and, you know, they're hosting six a month within that state or within that, you know, hour, hour and a half, two hour driving range. And it lessens it down to where you're not going to get to see the inventory every week. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. All right, everybody. Take care. As always, in the comments, if you've been to some shows here recently, let me know what your experiences are in other states, other areas. I'm always curious. Uh, probably starting around May. Oh, actually, I say after June's show up in Indianapolis, I'm probably going to look at traveling out uh, a little bit deeper to some shows, seeing what else is out there. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one.